with a pending lawsuit against six people, one of them being Corporal Gregory of the Levy County Sheriff Department. It states particularly that Lynette is of age, elderly, she's poor and disabled. So what is a old, disabled, elderly, poor individual do during a hurricane? One of the largest hurricanes to hit this area in Florida in a long time. Well, you may think this isn't relevant, but I think it's extremely relevant based on this lawsuit because she posted one hour ago in her Otter Creek standing in my trash. I wanted to let everyone know we're fine. John is fine. We suffered some damage, but nothing that can't be moved or replaced, etc. We're blessed. Now, what was this damage? Was it garbage was blown all over the property or was it a blessing they are blessed because the garbage was blown off of the property. That's not the key that I want to focus in on. It's right here. Please pray for our neighbors in Otter Creek. Now, this is interesting that she's stating she wants to pray for all the neighbors in Otter Creek. I'm a neighbor. She claimed I have no other neighbor than her. Do you think she's praying for me? Eh, I'm going to say no. She's created problems with all the other neighbors. She stated that 98% of Otter Creek residents are in favor and support her and John. We both know that's not true, claiming that only George and I are the only ones that don't. All right, so she wants to pray for the neighbors. Hey, I encourage prayer. I've been praying for the neighbors. This woman needs prayer. But then it goes on to say, our neighbors in Otter Creek, trees are on houses, roofs are gone. Which, by the way, I've gotten full updates from the mayor of Otter Creek. I asked him, how are things? He said there was a dozen trees on the major roads. He cut those all up before the sun came up. One major tree fell on the water plant. It broke the water line. And so Otter Creek residents do not have water. And half of Otter Creek does not have power right now. So there were some home damages. I've heard nothing about roofs being gone in Otter Creek. And I've talked to almost all the residents that I am in connection with in Otter Creek. And then she goes on to say, thank you. I'm headed home with HG, but she puts the whole name. Whoa, look at this. Public, public personality, publicly stating a child's name in a public post. And then she goes on to say, to help out. Okay, hurricane, destruction, roofs are gone. But this lawsuit is claiming she's completely and totally disabled. But now she's going back to Otter Creek to help out? Do you understand? You can't be disabled and work at the same time. Not only that, we have thousands, yes, thousands of screenshots of her stating that if this child is around anyone whatsoever, she will die. Not get sick, die. So now all of a sudden, she can be around people, which we all know this child has been around all these people anyway. She's got constant rug addicts rotating in and off of the property. And let's not forget the watermelon festival in Chiefland. Let's not forget the flea market in Chiefland. Let's not forget the splash pad with water, which other kids who have done who knows what in. <sighs> you realize this is one of the biggest jokes in the world. To sit there and say these types of things after she said these other things. I'm disabled. Oh, but now I'm going to go help the residents of Otter Creek and I'm going to work. My child can't be around people. Oh, I'm taking my child with me to go help out. Absolute insanity. But she also, because she is a public figure, she deleted or she turned off one fundraiser, GoFundMe, and she created a whole nother this morning. As a matter of fact, it's called Support Michelle, John, Harley Grace's Journey. And it says, hi, I just want to thank everyone who has now seen the truth and is helping us. Well, before she has posted, the only people that have helped her are family and friends. You know, those friends she's never met before in her life. And she says, oh, Harley Grace, John and I are more grateful. We're so thankful that our voices can now not only be heard, but seen as well. I'm not sure how you see a voice, but eh, you know what? I, I am sure the putridity that probably comes through those lips. I'm pretty sure you could probably see that nastiness. And she says, God always brings truth to light. I agree because the truth has been coming to light. 
She has failed in every single way in court so far. She's been found guilty every single way so far. She just had a motion in federal court denied to dismiss the case. Another failure. And she goes on to say, God is bringing to light. Uh, yes, God is bringing the truth to light. She says, this GoFundMe money will be used for our repairs needed on our vehicles, our camper, our homestead, our bills, whatever we need it for. Oh, finally. Finally, we're not commingling funds illegally. Finally. Finally. We're using it for whatever we want. You know, finger monkeys, things like that. It's not been easy at all for us over these last two years with all this going on that they created, right? I mean, we all get that. Anybody with common sense already realizes that. We've definitely been throwing some lemons, and all we can do is give it to the Lord and make lemonade. Well, I hope that's not lemonade being poured out of that bucket. You know, the bucket with the funnel that then goes to the gain uh, laundry detergent bottle? That would be some pretty nasty lemonade. And we already know they're dumping all of this all over the property illegally because she's posted it, and we have thousands of screenshots. Okay, so let's keep going on. All right, lemonade now. Okay, all right. And so she says, I'm going to try and reconnect with God in my faith. Isn't this interesting that there are so many who have tried to attack me and say, Jeremy, you claim to be a Christian. How dare you talk like that? How dare you be in court? How dare, which is a very, very, very small, minute percentage. I mean, not even 1% out of 100%. And yet these same individuals that say this about me, Say nothing about the words that come out of her mouth. Say nothing about her actions. Say nothing about what she has said and done. And she claims to be a minister. Not just faith in God. A minister shepherding others. And these same people who attack me say nothing about her. Isn't that, isn't that odd? I find that rather odd. She goes, it's hard. It's humbling for sure. Well, it should be humbling. She's put herself in this position. Well, I suppose. I will update daily, she says now. I can only hope. I will update da daily, right there. We can only hope because all of these GoFundMes are being used in court against her. Everything she's posted is being used in court against her. We hope that she updates daily. I, I, I literally will even say it. I hope she updates daily. This is just more for court. I hope her lawyer keeps going on these different live streams. I hope she goes on these live streams and keeps posting. This is just more for court. All right. And it goes on to say that Harley Grace and I did go to a hotel in Gainesville. So we are safe. Interestingly enough, as many predicted, they would be in a hospital. But apparently they scammed some people out of some money. And you go, Jeremy, is it really scamming if the people willingly gave? Okay. In my opinion... It's all a scam. So she says, my sister helped us and a friend. Well, we already know that's probably Patty. Not her sister, Patty, Patty Plummer. John stayed behind. So she ditched John during the hurricane. John, who's got wrappings up to his crotch, who can't take care of himself. John stayed behind to care for the animals in the property. I'll say thank you. For everything now. God bless. Stay tuned. You think she was saying God bless when she was saying all these things about John being abusive? Do you think she was saying God bless when she's telling people she wants John on a live? Do you think she's saying God bless when she's telling everybody and anybody that anybody's had any interaction with this child is somehow now a, um, a um, grooming? You know, she stated that Lloyd is now grooming. I mean, who knows what else she's going to say. Every individual that comes in contact with her is somehow doing something against children. You don't find that in the, uh, um, uh, I will pray for you uh -huh. and bless you. I want to say thank you. God bless you. Stay tuned because more truth is coming. I can guarantee you more truth is coming. Absolutely. There's going to be a tremendous waterfall overflowing of truth. And it's going to come through the court process, the legal way. God is good all the time, even in our darkest times. He loves his children. Well, I will 100% agree with that. That's probably one thing that Lynette and I can see eye to eye on. God is good all the time. And he does love his children. And there are many that aren't his children. And then they wonder why they're in these situations that they created. Let's dig back into this crazy lawsuit. Thus far, we've seen that the six individuals that are being sued by Lynette 
as she's being manipulated and controlled by another outside individual who hilariously calls himself a lawyer. In four pages thus far, in 21 points in this lawsuit, not a single one of these individuals has even been brought up. That is, the defendants. The only individuals that have been brought up are myself, George, and Lloyd. None of which are a part of this insane lawsuit that most likely will be immediately tossed out of the court system. So number 22, keeping in mind that these individuals came in, saved Lloyd, got all of his property off of turd purgatory, and now 22 says Miss Preston and HG were terrified and intimidated by having five people and an armed sheriff's deputy suddenly appear and disrupt their peace and privacy. That's interesting because I don't see any terror with that child. That child begging to get out of the locked camper, which Lynette was doing illegally, isolating the child in a dangerous situation. I see a child begging to get out of isolation, to have real relationships and connection with people. I see a child begging for friends, begging for family, begging for somebody who just doesn't yell at them. Now, I may be a little intense in this. There is a child who can't defend for herself, who's being yelled at constantly in a neglectful and, in my opinion, abuseful situation. And I didn't see her afraid of any sheriff, any armed sheriff deputy. Now, there was a corporal, nor have I seen her afraid when those two, mean Lynette and Crook, have placed the child in the middle of sheriff deputy after sheriff deputy after sheriff deputy after they've broken the civil protection order and broken the civil protection order and broken the civil protection order. I didn't see the child afraid. I see Lynette and Crook thrusting her in the middle of this situation and circumstance, intentionally violating, intentionally breaking civil protection orders, legal orders, legal orders that they can be jailed for. They've already been fined. They can be jailed for. And they are thrusting this child in the middle of it. You know what? 70 plus phone calls with foul language to the sheriff deputies that we know of thus far. And the child is listening to all of it. And not yet have we heard any fear. Now we hear screaming of her trying to get away from Lynette. Now if we can equate screaming with fear, then the only fear that has ever been recorded is fear of Lynette. That's it. I didn't see her afraid or hear any fear into being intimidated by five people and an armed sheriff deputy that suddenly appear. I see her thrilled going, please interact with me. Please talk to me. Please play with me. Please begging for social interaction because that's how we were created to be social human beings. So this is ridiculous, completely and totally ridiculous, but we finally see one of the six defendants here, the armed sheriff deputy, who isn't a sheriff deputy. He's a corporal. 23. Oh, here we go. Hales yet again. 23. Hales orchestrated the invasion. All right, there you got it. Hales orchestrated the invasion. That's interesting because Beecham, the undersheriff, orchestrated the safety and removal of Lloyd's property and his legal rights to remove his property where he was legally living, which he was actually illegally living because they illegally had Lloyd's camper on the property. So Hales orchestrated the invasion. We got aliens coming in now or something? The invasion of Miss Preston's property. I forgot E.T. Hmm. All right. The invasion of Miss Preston's property to occur when she was the only adult present on her property at the time of the arrival of the defendant, as was known to all defendants. The arrival of the defendant as was known to all the defendants. So somehow, in my superhuman abilities, I made John pull out a firearm, brandish it to an adult male, an adult female, and an eight-year-old little girl. I somehow, in my infinite power, I don't know where it all came from, but somehow, according to his, him, I somehow have it, I made sure he got arrested 
for his illegal activity. Oh, by the way, the three 18-year-olds, I had everything to do with them wanting to get away from this psychotic woman as well. Because I somehow have brain power that controls everybody and everything. Interesting, isn't it? So I orchestrated this so that she would be alone. Um, in all reality, <laughs> that's farthest thing from the truth. Because this was originally planned before Lloyd broke his hip. And obviously I have no control what Crook has done and the consequences that he has had to pay because of what he has done. Now, the smartest thing for Lynette, she should have just been like, you know what, go ahead and leave. But she's not that smart. And neither is this individual who is writing this, who's getting her in deeper and deeper and deeper trouble. To make sure she was the only adult present. Listen, I think this child is more mature than Lynette. I think this child has more common sense than Lynette. So to state something such as the only adult present is pretty funny. Because I would not consider this woman the equation of mental maturity of an adult. Of course, that's my opinion. I have every right to it. So to state that I somehow have some kind of magical powers over everybody to make sure this happened this way is absurd. All right, number 24. With the assistance of Defendant Gregory, we're finally, finally getting to one of the defendants. Okay, Number 24. Remember, there's 80 points. With the assistance of Defendant Gregory to ensure Miss Preston could not interfere with the invasion of her property. Oh, you mean the law? It's not her property when she has somebody living on it. They have rights. I have all kinds of rental property. I can't just go on the property right now. I can't just walk up and open the door and go in on the property. They have rights. And so the insanity of this, with the assistance of Defendant Gregory to ensure Miss Preston could not interfere with the evasion of her property... Defendants Willis, Granger, Granger, West, and Woods proceeded to take anything they claimed belonged to Campbell. They took everything that Lynette claimed was Lloyd's, that Lloyd was there and claimed was Lloyd's, and Lynette fought on a refrigerator, a $1,200 refrigerator, and stole it from Lloyd. That's reality. Now, further reality is there are more of Lloyd's belongings there. He just wanted saved and gone and out and rescued. And so he just abandoned it. He obviously wasn't in a position where he could get up and walk and go say this, 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 this. The insanity, the, um, the crudeness of this verbiage to attack a victim such as Lloyd who fought for this individual's freedom to actually write such absurd things is grotesque in every stretch of the imagination. Completely and totally unprofessional. It, it is just, it, it's mind-blowing. All right, so let's keep going. Proceeded to take anything they claimed belonged to Lloyd. With no opportunity for Miss Preston to discuss the RV or other items with Campbell, who was protected from even speaking with Miss Preston while the invasion ensured. If Lloyd wanted to communicate with Lynette, Lloyd had every opportunity to communicate with Lynette. By all means, it didn't stop Lynette from throwing a cross at Lloyd, now did it? It didn't stop Lynette from hurting Lloyd's feelings, now did it? It didn't stop Lynette from illegally using his government cards, now did it? It didn't stop Lynette from illegally going into his camper, which frankly I think he should pursue legal action against her. She legally cannot go into his residency. It didn't stop her from all these illegal activities. This is a joke. What she did was illegal. He has tenant rights. She broke them. This is absolute absurdity. Take anything they claim belonged to Campbell. Except they still didn't get everything. Okay? Didn't that give Miss Preston the opportunity to discuss the RV? Oh, wait. Hold a second. She literally says, Lloyd can take his camper. 
What discussion is needed when she's already told the sheriff, which is Corporal Gregory, when she's already told others, when she's texted him, begging him for that camper, begging to pay $200 a month, which she could never afford anyway. And he said no. The conversations have already happened. There is no contract. There is no agreement. There is no need for communication. The, the insanity of this is just... I, I, can't, I can't imagine. Can you imagine being Judge Davis when he reads this and then he sees the actual footage? It's on camera. The camera does not lie. Lynette lies. Her lawyer lies. The camera doesn't lie. Can you imagine being the judge actually seeing this and what his feelings are going to be about Lynette and her lawyer? All right. Never gave her an opportunity to discuss the RV or any items with Campbell, who was protected from even speaking. Lynette had every opportunity to speak to Lloyd. Lloyd didn't want to speak to her, and he has every legal right not to speak to her. Number 25. Hales chose defendants. Here we go. My, my immense power. Hales chose defendants, Granger, Granger, and Willis as his people to retrieve Mr. Campbell's RV because they have active YouTube channels and would broadcast video footage of the invasion. All right, first of all, Hales didn't choose anybody. And why isn't Rex in there? Rex doesn't have an active YouTube channel. Rex is the one that actually put the camper on the property free of charge for Lloyd. Rex is the one that pulled the camper off of the property free of charge for Lloyd. And there is no YouTube channel. Willis recorded for his own protection and never released any video on YouTube. Ever. I wasn't even there and released no video. Except there were people who were there who filmed for their own protection. And one of them did share with me their video, and I did share that online. Accountability and protection. And boy, am I ever glad that I did share it online now. Because as Lynette said this morning, God will shine truth. He will shine his light on the truth. This is nothing but bold-faced lies. This is shrouded in darkness. And yet the video footage sheds the light on the truth. So Hales chose the defendants. I didn't choose any defendants, first of all. None of these people are true defendants because this is a joke of a case. These are individuals that care about other individuals. These are individuals that care about the residents of Otter Creek. They care about the town of Otter Creek and they care about Lloyd. When a neighbor comes to you and says, I need help, this is serious. What do most neighbors do? They help. Now, when a neighbor such as Lynette comes to you and she tries to take advantage of you and extort you, you stay as far away as possible, which all of these individuals had done. They didn't want to be on this property. They didn't want to be in this situation. None of them ever want to be on this property again. Nobody wants to be around Lynette or Crook, and nobody wants Lynette or Crook around them. These are neighbors who help somebody in need because that's the right thing to do. And it has nothing to do with Hales orchestrating. Hales was contacted. So you realize Lloyd contacted Brett. Brett contacted me. Is there anything you can do? He's in Alaska. I'm in Ohio. And then we ask people who care about other people, can you help save this man? And they did. End of story. And that's exactly what Judge Davis is going to see. So let's keep going on because they all have YouTube channels, except one didn't even broadcast that he filmed for his own protection. He had GoPro on the entire time. So we can show a whole nother vantage point of it. And yet it was never broadcasted because it was all about helping. All right, number 26. While on Miss Preston's property, the defendants wandered around her property, taking video footage of private locations, even threatening to video HG until Miss Preston took action to shield the child from videoing. What a crock of lies. So the defendants, when they were on the property, as you can see, were only in the areas that they needed to be to reclaim Lloyd's possessions and property. 
Now, Lynette, as we see here, oh boy, oh boy, they were threatening to video HG until Miss Preston took action to shield the child from videoing. Oh no, what she did was endangered the child, threatening to lock her illegally in a camper. And Corporal Gregory had to tell her, don't you dare. Don't do it. I don't remember his exact words, so don't quote me on either of those. But she was warned not to do it. As the child... Wait, hold a second. Hold a second. Wait, wait, wait. Number 22, HG was terrified and intimidated. Wait, not, but, but now Miss Preston took action. She's shielding the child from videoing. So what you're trying to tell me... In this document is the child is begging to be out and interact with people, but Miss Preston, Lynette, is blocking and shielding the child? What a joke. Lynette is literally trying to lock her in a camper. Number 27, Miss Preston felt helpless and violated and was terrified that her daughter would somehow be harmed or affected by the events. That anybody, anybody seeing this video or videos see any helplessness or fear or terror from Lynette. Let's see, we saw a lot of anger. We saw a lot of rage. We saw yelling, screaming. We saw superhuman strength, a disabled elderly poor woman pulling out shells of tools and tossing them everywhere. Think she's eating spinach in a dumpster? Miss Preston felt helpless. She didn't look all that helpless to me. My goodness, if she would actually apply that strength, if she would apply that same passion, that same motivation to actually cleaning this piece of crap property up, it could maybe become something. But she doesn't. If she could apply all this passion, all this motive to actually do something for good, maybe even teach this child, and instead of being online all day or on the phone with Patty all day, then maybe something good would come off of this. You know, those lemons turning into lemonade? This is such a joke. Felt helpless, violated, terrified. Their daughter would somehow be harmed or affected. The daughter is literally begging for other people. I don't think this daughter is terrified at all. Except of Lynette. Again, only person I've seen this child run away from is Lynette. Number 28, prior to the unannounced invasion of her property on April 12th, there was no prior attempt or communication by Lloyd. The Levy County Sheriff's Office, Hales, or any of his people to arrange with Miss Preston to have Campbell's property picked up. The surprise invasion was an integral part of the defendant's plans. Oh my goodness, what are we, the A-team now? No, we're the Hales team. dun 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 Dun, 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 the crack team. They were they were discarded by their own government. It was Judge Craig to Thomas's who put an illegal injunction on Jeremy so he could not contact Lynette, even though his her fool of a lawyer says Hales didn't contact her. No kidding, Hales didn't contact her. I'm not like Lynette or Crook. I don't break legal documents, even if those legal documents are illegal. How stupid can this be? There's a, literally a temporary injunction on me at this point in time. And he's saying Hales didn't reach out to Lynette. Um, duh! Hales isn't ever reaching out to Lynette. I've never reached out to Lynette. You know, it's so funny. They sit there and go, cyber-stalking and this and that and the whole deal. No, this is me filming my life. There's no time at any time I have ever interacted with Lynette on purpose by any stretch of the imagination. Any interactions have come because of her or because of him. That's it. End of story. All communication has come from them. Never initiated by me. Never initiated by George. Never initiated by anybody because nobody wants anything to do with them. So all of a sudden, prior to the unannounced invasion of the property on April 12th, there was no prior attempt to at communication by Lloyd. Lloyd doesn't have to communicate when he's leaving. Lloyd doesn't have to communicate with her. if he. Lloyd can be on that property and never say one word to her. There is nothing that says Lloyd has to communicate with her at all. He can make his own decisions. He's grown. No communication. Or by the Levy County Sheriff. No kidding. They don't have to. They were there for a standby. Even though 
It was under Sheriff Beecham, you know, Lynette's bestie. They're besties for the resties. It was under Sheriff Beecham that actually coordinated all this at this time on this day. Where's Beecham in this? And he didn't even show. Beecham was supposed to be there, and he didn't even show. In my opinion, coward. Shows no show. He sends Corporal Gregory instead. Or Hales, or any of his people. Well, why would any of my people... This is so funny, his people. I don't own people. You see this quotation, his people? I don't own people. It's not okay to own people. I thought we already figured that all out here in the great United States of America. That that's not okay. Now I realize this is Florida, this is the South, and there's some people who still think that this kind of thing is okay. It has never been okay. It is not okay. It never will be okay. And not only that, there's a temporary injunction on me that states that anybody who's associated with me on the planet... I go to jail if they contact Lynette. And you think Davis is going to go, oh yeah, well that makes sense. This fool, oh my goodness, I cannot wait. I cannot wait for a deposition. Oh my goodness, I can't wait. <laughs> oh, oh, and I guarantee you, we're videoing it all. You're going to see everything with this fool. Everything with it. If you can see past his nose. It's, I, mean, I got a big nose, but holy cow. His people to arrange with Miss Preston to have Campbell's property picked up. The surprise invasion was an integral part of the defendant's plans. Well, hold a second. Whose plans are these? You see this, right? Integral part of the defendant's plans. Right there. Integral part of the defendant's plans. Now, I'm not a defendant, but he's saying this is all about me. So who planned this? He's saying multiple people did. It's either Jeremy with what the Hales planned this or all of the defendants. Here he's saying it's defendants. Previously, he said it was all me. Finally, page six. Oh, man, there's 14 pages. We're at number 29, believe it or not. There was no basis for any of the defendants to reasonably believe it was necessary to have an armed deputy sheriff or any security or to conduct a surprise invasion of Miss Preston's property to get Lloyd's property. Really, no basis. So an individual, Crook, is in jail. Lynette has lied to the deputies, then comes clean with the deputies, says, yeah, he did it, here's his firearm. Lynette, who's posted, she'll pop a cap on anybody, in anybody who steps foot on her property. Oh, but by the way, here's my blessing box. Come on over, it's filled with mold and garbage and dirt and rust and, and it's garbage and rodents and come on in. But if you step foot on my property, I'll pop a cap in your backside. Oh, and by the way, here's a picture of me I carry everywhere. Oh, wait, wait, you think her lawyer hasn't seen this yet? Because she deleted it all? As if we don't have it? Obviously we have it. Most of you have seen it. The insanity. No basis for the defendants to reasonably believe it was necessary to have an armed deputy or sheriff. Really? The woman who literally states that when she doesn't get her way from anybody or anybody, she states that they did something to her child illegally, immorally, unethically. Which, by the way, this lawyer will probably be the next person she blames for that. I'm waiting for her to say Silverman did something to the child. I'm waiting. And this is going to blow up in the lawyer's face as well because she's going to go against him next. So all of a sudden they have no reasonable fear. Hmm. A woman who constantly lies about everybody and about everything. A woman who posts that she's going to pop a cap in anybody's black backside that steps foot on her property. And yet, and then entraps them and says, hey, come on my property. Get anything you want from this box. And they have no fear. Hmm. I don't know. Accountability? Protection? I mean, do I sound like a broken record yet? Accountability and protection. Accountability and protection. Accountability and protection. They have every legal right to film for their accountability and their own protection. Nobody can say that this happened when it's all filmed. Nobody can say or make an accusation such, well, obviously they can make accusations. Remember? Lynette had to shield the child. The child's literally trying to run Lynette over just to have interaction with other people. There's no shielding. The child wants away from Lynette. 
So I guess you can make accusations, even though there was filming. I mean, this whole thing is nothing but false accusations. A false narrative. A false reality show. Huh? Oh, boy. There is no reason for the defendants to reasonably believe it was necessary to have a deputy there. Absolutely, they should have had a deputy there. As a matter of fact, they should have had more than one. Corporal Gregory should not have been the only one there. Beecham should have actually kept his word and showed up. It's protection. And the people that needed protected all had somebody there for accountability, filming as well, public record, protecting them from a pathological, habitual liar. An unhinged, unhealthy individual. Number 30, rescuing Lloyd's RV and possessions was a pretext for Hales to have his people surprise and intimidate Miss Preston and take video footage of her property for broadcasting on YouTube as was known by all defendants. We don't need footage. I don't need footage of Lynette's property. I don't want to record anything else with Lynette. And yet, here I am, because she hasn't stopped. And now she's got somebody manipulating her and pressuring her to keep going and not stop. It could all end for her if she would just stop. She didn't stop at a cease and desist. She didn't stop at a civil protection order. She didn't stop when she was found guilty for violating it. She's continuing to go on being manipulated and controlled by another individual who thinks he's somehow going to get something. He'll get nothing. And she'll get nothing. What will happen is everything will be taken away from them. Rescuing the camper and the RV and the possessions was a pretext to have his people. Again, I don't have people. You don't own people. You would think somebody up north, you know, Connecticut, Massachusetts, would understand it's not appropriate to own people. Or to use them or manipulate them into lawsuits that are frivolous, that they are going to then have countersuits against, and they are going to be responsible for every one of these six defendants' legal fees, which they will never in their lifetime be able to pay, meaning Lynette and Crook. Or we could say Lynette and HG. Because it was his people in the surprise to intimidate, literally intimidate. Did anybody see Lynette intimidated by any of these individuals? As a matter of fact... These individuals didn't even communicate with her that I can recall. If it was, it was, I will give this to Lloyd. Or, is this yours or Lloyd's? Clarification, not intimidation. I, <laughs> I, I just can't wait to see Judge Davis read this and then see the actual footage. The actual stupidity and foolishness of this. Hmm. To surprise and intimidate. Who was intimidated? Well, we see Deanna was scared for herself. Lloyd communicates he's scared for himself. The other individuals have communicated they are scared for themselves. Because this woman is unhinged. Because of what this woman says and does to try and destroy people and their reputations. Because of what this woman has posted publicly all over the internet as she is a public figure. I didn't see any intimidation from these individuals trying to help and save Lloyd. I saw only intimidation coming from Lynette. And I saw a deputy trying to de-escalate the situation and the intimidation coming from Lynette. I saw corporate Gregory continuing to try and de-escalate and bring Lynette down in all the rage and all the anger. I didn't see any intimidation except her intimidating other people. And I'm sure the judge is going to see it the exact same way. Because it was known for broadcast for YouTube, it was known to all the defendants. As if any of these defendants need to be on that property to video that property. There's already wildlife footage of that property. Every time the deputies go out there, there's footage. It's all public information. Nobody wants to be on a piece of property that is dangerous with dangerous people. Nobody wants to smell the smells on that property. It's horrid. It's horrific. It's putrid. Nobody wants to see the filth on that property. 
It makes you sick to your stomach to think that there's a child living in that. Nobody wants to see the bucket. Nobody wants to smell the bucket. Nobody wants to know where the bucket is being dumped illegally on the property. Nobody wants to be on that property. Number 31 over the next several days. What the hails. And again, why is my name in this constantly if I'm not even a defendant? Over the next several days, What the Hales and the Defendants, Therese Granger's YouTube channel, Madam Mayor's Adventures, as well as numerous other YouTube channels, propagating Hales' fake reality storyline to profit from it. How in the world could it be fake if it actually happened? If it was fake, that would mean Lynette works for me and she was part of the storyline and the plan. If it was fake, that means this fool works for me. And I guarantee you, he is doing a tremendous amount of work for me right now. He is discrediting himself. He is discrediting his actual client. He is doing more work for me on my behalf than my own lawyer is. And I'm paying my lawyer and he's doing this for free. So that means this fool is a part of it all. If it's fake, this fool is a part of it. Lynette's a part of it. Crook's a part of it. They're all in on the grand scheme and the plan and the scripting and the writing. This is as real as it gets. As well as numerous other YouTube channels propagating the Hale's fake reality storyline. Can't be fake. It happened. Hurricane. How many people were actually recording and putting the hurricane on YouTube? Oh, quite a few people. Did the hurricane happen? Lynette posted about the hurricane, what she was doing in the hurricane, then she posted another GoFundMe. Is it fake or did the hurricane happen? It was recorded. Maybe it was a fake reality. There was a hurricane. It was hitting Levy County, Outer Creek, Cedar Key, all these areas, Florida. Is it a fake reality? No, it was 100%. A reality. Do you understand that is the stupidest oxymoron I have ever heard in my life? Fake reality. This fool can't even grasp his mind around two words that don't go together. If it's fake, it's not real. If it's reality, it is real. So it's an unreal, real? How stupid is this? It's an oxymoron. The two don't go together. Gosh, I can't wait to get this guy in a deposition. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And I promise you, you're going to see all of it. All of it. All right. As well as numerous other YouTube channels propagating the Hales fake reality storyline to profit from it. Profit from it? Do you realize people gave their own time and their own money to help this man? Nobody's profiting from anything. People are giving. And see, this man was actually appreciative and gracious. And yet you have people like Lynette and Crook that think all you should do is give to them and give and give and give. And that's the problem with givers and takers. Givers will give everything. Takers will take everything. Therefore, givers, you must have boundaries. And I say that as a giver. Boundaries. And I'm still learning that. I'm 47 years old now. And yes, I'm a very successful businessman. And I appreciate all that God has done to bless me with that. Because I make proper and right choices in my life. Now, I've made plenty of bad choices as well, and I've suffered the consequences for those choices. Some of them are horrific, and I wouldn't wish them on anybody. But you realize we have this whole premise. I mean, the whole book of Joshua is literally, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And we reap the blessings because of that. And that doesn't mean that you're going to absolutely 100% be blessed. But God does give us blessings to the faithful. And we want to be found faithful. I know you do, I do, to do the right thing and to help people. And we're going to continue to help people. But there also has to be limitations when you realize that somebody's just trying to take advantage of you. And this is another situation where a lawyer is trying to take advantage of Lynette, but through Lynette to try and take advantage of me, thinking that he's going to get some kind of money, which he never will. And thinking he's going to get some kind of promotion, which... He'll never promote him either. I haven't said his name yet, nor will I. When I show you the deposition, I don't know. Maybe we'll just put a big old poop over his face. But I'll cut out the nose so you can see the nose. I guess if we do that, you'll never see the poop because it's so big. That profile is huge. Um, we'll, we'll think about that one, okay? Oh, my goodness. The story on all the channels broadcasting the property invasion footage was for HG was in danger. Number 32, so the story is HG was in danger as evidenced by the cluttered property conditions and based on the false statements of the channel host and a save HG sprang up from the What the Hales fan base as a result. Again, nothing but What the Hales in this. And I'm not even a defendant. So, hashtag save Harley 
is a real hashtag and it continues to go on because anywhere else in the United States, this would have never been allowed. Anywhere else, this would have been dealt with appropriately. This child is in a neglectful situation. At a bare minimum, you cannot argue, whether you agree with me or not, you cannot argue it is illegal for an, even an adult to be living in a shed in the state of Florida, let alone a child that is claimed to have a life-threatening disease that is now somewhere around Otter Creek helping people with Lynette, who has a disability, who can't even pick up five gallons of milk, but somehow she's helping all of her neighbors. She's not helping any neighbor. There's not a neighbor on in Otter Creek that would allow that woman on their property. Maybe Russ is us if you wanted something. I think we both know what that is. And now we're gonna have the child with these individuals as well? Yeah, that, that sounds real smart. Because the story on all the channels, well, if it's a story on all the channels, maybe it's a reality. If the same, if there are multiple people, six different people saying all the same thing, then maybe it's a reality. There's a problem and a solution needs to happen sooner rather than later before something horrific happens to this child.